When Dell announced their new refreshed XPS 15, I was admittedly very excited. It seemed like finally we would have an ultra portable that could handle creative needs as well as some light gaming in a slim package that had all the power you could also need when you needed a performance PC. So as soon as they went up for sale on Dell's website and went ahead and picked one up, this video is not going to be a full review, that will come later. I just wanted to go over my initial impressions of the laptop, as well as let you guys know some of the issues I've already run into, which may or may not be a deal breaker for you. Dell's XPS lineup has really evolved over the years and is now seen as a direct competitor on the Windows side to Apple's MacBook Pro. You have premium build materials as well as a thin and light design that also offers good, healthy power for creators. Now, this is the box here. Let's crack it open and see what you get inside. So you obviously get a laptop, obviously. You also will see a little booklet or cardboard pamphlet that has all of your manuals um, warranty stuff, all that good stuff. Underneath that, we have our charging brick, so 130 watt USB-C charging brick, which is nice. The same thing you'll see on the XPS 17. You also get a nice little mini USB-C dongle. So it comes with one, it has an HDMI cable attachment and also a USB-A port. So for those of you who don't wanna live that USB-C life, you wanna have a little dongle, you don't have to purchase one, they included one for you. So this year, Dell actually did refresh the look of the XPS 15, which is definitely welcome. I think they did a fantastic job. It has an all aluminum outside casing, and it looks really nice. Starting at the top, it's very smooth with the mirrored Dell logo. I'm not really honestly a huge fan of the mirror logo, but it's pretty subtle and it doesn't look crazy on this laptop. As for ports and connectors, there are now no USB-A ports. Let's take a look at the left side here. We have two USB-C ports and a Kensington lock. Then going around to the right side, we have one additional USB-C port, an SD card slot, and the headphone jack. I'm not super crazy about not having any USB type A ports. I will miss them, but it's something that I can definitely get used to. Taking a look at the bottom of the laptop, you can see the first big change, the XPS logo here. That used to be a door that flipped open and had a, like a spec card underneath. That's now gone. It looks like the bottom venting is a little bit different as well. And you see these dual speaker grills on the left and right side, which help push sound out of the bottom and the top for the new updated speaker system. The venting has also been improved for the exhaust at the back. No hot air will shoot into your screen, which is a common thing that you see with some cheaper laptops. Everything will exhaust out of the bottom, which is great. Dell also put a single LED strip in the front. So when you charge the laptop or plug it in, that lights up to let you know that you are on power. Now you can open this laptop with one hand super easily. The hinge is very robust and nicely designed. Immediately when you open this up, if you've seen the one from last year, you'll be greeted by the new updated internal layout. So we have a wider keyboard, which is great. Bigger keys, easier to type on. We also have two new up firing speakers, which was a welcome update. The speakers on the old XPS model, the speakers on most Windows laptops in general are terrible. So that was a great update. We also have still the carbon fiber deck, um, which is fantastic. But the star of the show is definitely that trackpad. It is a really smooth, accurate feeling, great trackpad. You can go from corner to corner. You don't have to turn up the mouse sensitivity or anything. The keyboard layout is traditional, but on the top right corner, there is a power button slash fingerprint reader. So once you actually turn the laptop on and get into it, the first thing you'll notice is how gorgeous the screen is. It is edge to edge, one of the thinnest displays I've ever seen, probably the thinnest bezels that I've ever seen, and it looks fantastic. Colors are super saturated, uh, it's bright, it's very bright, and it simply, they did a great job here. This year's model is now 16 by 10, so the resolution is actually higher than 4K, and it is still a full touch screen, which is great. You can get a 1080p model, but it has a matte display, non-touch. I would definitely just go for this unless you need absolutely the best battery life. Speaking of battery life, they've dropped from a battery capacity that was in the 90s to now an 84 watt hour battery, but I'm still getting that eight plus hours. If you're just doing casual web browsing, Word documents, watching some YouTube videos occasionally, you should be able to get decent all day battery life. Obviously, if you're gonna do anything more intensive, game, edit, render video, compile code, you're gonna see that battery life suffer. 
This model here has the 10750H, which is a six core, 12 thread processor. It also has the 1650Ti, 16 gigs of RAM, and one terabyte SSD. So this is a pretty beastly laptop. There's also now a second M.2 slot, so you can have either a M.2 SATA or M.2 NVMe drive to add additional storage in here, bring it in line with a lot of the more popular gaming laptops. When you take it in, the whole XPS 15 as a package, it really is an impressive feat of engineering. Being able to fit this screen and these components in a case that is that compact is truly impressive. And for example, this is another thin and light laptop. This is an Aero 15 Classic. It also has slim bezels, super slim bezels on three sides, not four. And it also has a similar CPU, GPU, and storage setup. But as you can see, the XPS 15 fits comfortably inside of it. It's significantly smaller and significantly lighter. That is quite impressive. For people who are on the go a lot and want something that is compact, this is going to be a fantastic option. Now I do like this laptop. I like the potential that it has, but I have run into some really odd issues already. Unfortunately, like other 10th gen laptops from Intel, this laptop cannot take advantage of undervolting. XTU and throttle stop will not be able to function. There is no slider option to drop the voltage for them, which is very disappointing. That is a lot of performance lost, especially in a thin and light laptop like this. It would benefit greatly from being able to do a nice undervolt and drop those temps and raise that performance up. Some other 10th gen laptops like the MSI GS66 do have options in the BIOS to enable undervolting. So hopefully in the future, there can be a BIOS update made here for this machine. I checked the BIOS, went to the advanced mode, didn't see anything that would enable it, unfortunately. But fingers crossed in the future, we do get that functionality as well. The next issue is the audio software. So there's a piece of software called Max Audio that works with the Realtek driver, and it essentially gives you some quote unquote advanced features like spatial recognition for movies and stuff. It can track your head with the webcam, but essentially what it does is process the audio. So it seems like it's adding some sort of compression and thickening up of the bass, which I don't like. If you like the way music sounds, you're not gonna want that. You don't want that sort of processing on your audio. So uninstalling it, you'd think, oh, I can just uninstall it, run the regular Realtek driver. Um, no, you actually can't. You uninstall it, and anytime you plug in a headphone, in, something into the headphone jack, it will reinstall the application, and it comes back. It's, it's crazy, it will not go away. To get rid of this software, I had to uninstall it, restart the computer, then install an older Realtek driver just to make sure that it wouldn't come back. So it's not ideal, it adds processing to the main speakers, but it also adds processing to the headphone jack. So everything sounded like there was extra bass pumped into it, it sounded compressed, and there's also an audible echo. I wish I could give you an audio sample of what that sounds like, but it was not good. Um, and it's really, really disappointing to see that a software that does this much to the sound was added to a laptop like this. Issue number three is the touchpad. And this was something I was very, very surprised at. So the touchpad works and functions perfectly on this laptop. From a functionality standpoint, it works. The issue is that anytime I touch it, it makes a clicking noise. It's as if the touchpad is separate from whatever secure base or, or piece is underneath it. And anytime I'm, I even brush up against it, I can hear an audible clicking sound. It's incredibly annoying. So this is actually an issue that you can find if you do a search for it on older laptops. I've seen them from older Dell XPS 13s and 15s from multiple years ago. Apparently they still have not figured out how to fix this. Now the last issue I found with this laptop is GPU utilization. So whenever you're doing a CPU intensive application, it can spin it up and get the maximum performance from that CPU. The fans can kick in, it cools it, etc. Everything works well. When you throw a GPU into the mix, doing like a mixed workload or even just a GPU specific workload, like playing a game, rendering a video, something where you would think the GPU would be fully utilized, it's not. The integrated graphics seem to be doing a majority of the work where the GPU sits at around 24% or less. 
Here's an example of me trying to play Call of Duty and you can see on the left hand side, hardware monitor is reporting that the GPU is sitting at 100% utilization, but in actuality it's not. The integrated graphics are in that 70 to 80% range and the GPU is sitting at around 24%. No matter what I did in terms of settings, resolution, this issue was present. And when you look at the game in full screen mode, you can see how choppy the performance actually is. Uh, this was only at 1080p at all low settings. 1650 should be able to play that pretty smoothly. And even if you drop the resolution down to 720p, it's still just as choppy. The issue is that the GPU is not powering the game the way it should be. I really want to love this laptop. I want it to be everything that I thought it was going to be. If Dell can fix up some of the issues that we just went over, I think it will be that. It has a ton of potential. Hopefully, some of these things are software related. I'm hoping that this might just be some sort of lemon that I got and it's not a representation of what everyone else will get when they order. But for now, this is my impression. I'm probably going to be exchanging this one out for a new unit since that mouse pad issue is super annoying. I don't think I can, I can live with that. But if you guys picked one up for yourself, let me know what you think, if you're seeing the same issues or not. I'll definitely do a full review for sure in the coming up weeks. So I'll drop a link in the description for the article that will have all the information you saw here today as well as I'll update it with performance benchmarks, battery life, all that sort of thing as we go on. And then later down the line, I'll do a second follow-up video with it. that's gonna be a full review. So as always, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you like the video, I'm Jay. I'll see you next time.